hi guys welcome back to my channel today um if you're new here thank you you're very welcome and if you're old thank you guys for stopping by once again i really appreciate it and i've seen that you guys love a lot of like videos where i talk about my experience in canada so i was like well, why not just talk about the things you learned when you came here um so for those of you who don't know i've been in canada for like i think a year and a half or so but i'm not really sure but since 2018 september yeah so do the math and uh, so in this video i'm going to be talking about things that i did not know and then i know now so same thing as things that i've learned during my stay here in canada so before we get right into this video please take out time to subscribe to my channel it's just down there just click on the subscribe button two seconds let's wait okay Thank you guys for subscribing so let's get right into the video so thank you guys once again for subscribing to my channel i'm sorry if i sound funny i'm not eating i'm hungry i've not had lunch so i decided to film this video because once i chop like this my sleep gets up anyways so let's get right into the video sometimes you're gonna notice me looking down because i had to write the things down on paper so i don't forget pardon my ignorance but I'm well aware of some things now so don't come for me in the comment section okay this is just me giving my two cents of what i thought and what i think now one of the things that i've learned since i've been here is that they care like when i say they i mean the country the people the country and its people they care a lot like i mean they care a lot about the environment like they're so eco-friendly like uh, I say this because but my school building where I usually, usually took classes, um, I remember I used to see like signs up on the wall like this is a fragrance free zone even where I work like this is a free, fragrance fragrance free zone like so like be friendly to the air you know wear fragrance free um, cosmetic products like um, body spray and all of that I'm like do they make those like I thought the whole point of wearing, you know, fragrance is to smell nice. So, what's fragrance-free cosmetics like when you can't smell nice with it? But you know, so I noticed that, and we advised to wear like scent-free, fragrance-free product. I was like, okay, this is weird. And then <laughs> another thing I noticed is that whenever I usually went like to the grocery store or something to get items to get groceries, basically, and then when I'm at the counter, the cashier will usually ask me um would you like a bag to go with that and i'm like i, I always talk to myself i'm like is it on my head you want to put it like because sometimes it's a lot and i'm like duh i need a bag i never understood why they always asked till i think i don't even know how i found that but i found out that um you actually pay for the plastic bag i think it's about 10 or 15 cents i'm not sure but you pay for the plastic bags the cellophane you pay for it you know back in Nigeria, we didn't used to pay for anything like you just buy the other black nylon and then put it inside we didn't used to pay but so um paying for the plastic bags are kind of like ways to reduce plastic waste because um since i started from, like paying for it uh i bought my own like shopping bags the one that you can reuse over and over again and so that kind of like helps reduce plastic waste and which is a very good initiative in my opinion because it actually made me to stop buying plastic but because i don't want to pay for it it was so funny back then i was always wondering like, every time i buy something they would ask me oh, do you want a bag to go with that i'm like no it's on my head i want to carry it of course give me a bag but i didn't know i was paying for it and then there were other things like um i for example if i go and get something like coffee or a drink um, I would see plastic, I'm sorry, paper straws instead of like plastic straws and I hated paper straws because for example you spend maybe like 45 minutes having that drink the straw gets all soggy and irritating so I was like this is nasty so I just started noticing like a lot of like eco-friendly initiatives they've been doing okay I also noticed that whenever I buy like bottled water um it's always so expensive when i look at the tax like they put a lot of tax on like anything with plastic just to make you not to buy something with plastic like i think that's how that's how i 
and think about it though but another issue that i noticed when i came here this one is quite sensitive it's about like the opioid crisis i mean i had no idea like i was really ignorant about how severe the opioid crisis was in this part of the world like north america like canada mm -hmm. like I really I just thought oh yeah every country has their own like battle with opioid crisis but I really did not know it was that severe like one of the measures they use in combating like the drug abuse and everything I remember one time like when I was in class or during some of my classes um I would notice like they would tell us to help solve a particular problem because we'll be given a problem they'll be like oh come up with reasonable solutions and concerning like opioid crisis for example because we talked and talked and talked and talked a lot about opioid crisis i mean it's public health so it was expected so i also remember that some of the solutions like my fellow classmates in my cohort kept giving were like oh we'll provide safe injection sites we'll give naloxone kids also all of these things were very strange to me i was like what the hell is safe injection site so i asked one of my colleagues like sorry can you like enlighten me what is like what, what's a safe injection site so basically she was like oh um places like where um drug use is high like there there are like sites set up like i think there are some are mobile like let's let's just say like a building where um people that are on that abuse substances they go in to get like their fix i don't know please pardon me if I'm sounding ignorant or if I'm wrong, but they go in, that's from my understanding, they go in and get their drug from a professional, like a nurse, rather than just um, giving it to themselves wrongly or picking up used needles from the floor and, you know, giving themselves wrong and getting overdosed and also contracting like infections, which in turn then like puts a burden on the healthcare system. So all of that, I, I think that's how I reason did i don't know if i'm wrong you can you know correct me in the comment section but basically there was something called a safe injection site and i was like what like there's an actual place where you're actually seeing drug users go i like bro i just thought about it like if it was in, like in nigeria i just assumed like ah police would just be there to wait to nab you as you are putting leg inside the building they would just enter arrest you like they are using drug if they can arrest you for having dreads I say, yeah, yeah, oh boy. Hmm. Safe injection sites. I don't think it will work in Nigeria. So I found that really strange, but apparently that has been helping. So it's kind of like harm reduction techniques. Like, yes, the problem is already there. Other than telling people stop using drugs, what are ways you can do to reduce the harm that drug abuse is causing? So, yes, the harm reduction techniques. I just remembered now. And then there are also things like naloxone kits. Naloxone basically is like a drug that kind of like reverses um opioid overdose but there's something called like naloxone kits that they give to like um drug users just in case they overdose and everything so i found that really strange because anything drugs you are going to jail in nigeria another aspect i want to talk about is like the issue of food african food yes i knew that um, i was not going to see like african food items as much as i did back home obviously because i was in a new country and i wasn't sure what to expect but please if you are coming come with the necessary things like maggi curry time yeah you see all of those things but the cost that you as in the cost of those things compared to how much it is back home like tea tomatoes all of those things well, you can buy the foreign ones, but me, I like what I'm used to. I like like the Nigerian brands, so I don't want to try something different. Um, so yeah, the thing that really shocked me was like the cost of something like yam. Mm -hmm. One small yam that's like pencil, that's like mad. Wait, let me never, let me not go into too much details. But basically, just to have it at the back of your mind that you don't have the luxury of like affordable nigerian food items it's not like you just have to settle for whatever they have in the store um where i was i was in london ontario initially and they had i think one african store <sighs> bro for example pick milk <laughs> one tin of pick milk 
it was so expensive it was like in Nigeria, and I knew I calculated it, it was like 8,000 naira. Yes, for one thing, a big meal. So, please, if you're coming, come with like the essentials, like things that you know that um you use frequently and that you know you know you don't want to spend any money buying them here. But I don't know if they're going to let you take dairy across the border because I've had people travel and they have to like dispose their milk because they're not going to let you carry like meat or dairy. Or, I don't know, I don't know why, but anyways. Just bring the basics like your curry, thyme, maggi, tin tomatoes, you know, crayfish, pepper, all of those things. Just bring those small, small things. Please set a box aside okay, and carry the necessary food item. I didn't set a box aside for food. I was like, mm, don't worry, I don't need it, I don't need that. <laughs> I needed it. Please set a box aside because not only the Af African store not like readily available. Where I am right now, I'm in Vancouver, and it's so freaking far. Like, it's in a different city. I have to travel just to go to the African store. So, you want to, you know, stock up, you know, stockpile, you know, the necessary African ingredients that you need. Yeah, you need, you need a lot. So, I think the fourth thing that I, I, I learned when I came here was that the weather is not friendly. <laughs> it's not friendly. <laughs> yes, I knew where I was coming to was cold, but... I never knew how cold it was. I didn't know. I didn't know how cold it was. Oh. Anyways, let me stop whining. <laughs> Girl, boy, whoever is watching this video, <laughs> the winter is crazy. He's bad. As in, I keep asking myself, like, people that live here, like, do, do, do they think this is this is life? Especially me coming from a very humid region. It was not funny. The winter is cool. Like, it is cold. The winter messes up your dressing. Like, you can wear, like, a very cute outfit and everything. But the minute you step out of your door, you have to cover up your baby jackets, wear nonsense, wear scarf, cover everything. The dressing is now ugly. So, basically, the winter messes up your dressing because the weather is cool. Like, it's cold, cold. I did not anticipate how cold it was. I see if we can describe how cold it was. But right now, where I am lucky for me, I'm in Vancouver. And normally they say Vancouver is like the warmest place in the entire country. That's what they say, but it's not warm. More. I still used to wear winter jacket, gloves, everything. And then I remember last year, they're like, oh, summer is usually very warm. I was looking up in the summer, I was like, ah, I go naked. God, I go wear bomb shorts, I go do this one. Fam. When summer came, like when I say summer, summer, I think June, July, it was still cold in the morning. I'm like, is this the summer? Like everybody was anticipating because coast did they catch me? Because in the morning, I was when I was having like my practicum that time, I was I had to leave the house early, so I still had to wear like some sort of jacket, like not as thick as a winter jacket, but like you know something really light on my on my body. So basically, you still had. I still had to wear a jacket. I don't know about you, but I was still cold. And I really tolerate cold well, not like very well, but I tolerate cold to a certain level where I still had to wear like a jacket. So after all, the summer was not warm. As they said, it's warm, it's warm. It's not that warm. So basically, it's cold all year. But I think in Ontario, the summers are really warm, but I've not experienced like a summer there because I moved away before summer came. I think it's warm, like Nigeria warm in summer, and then it's cold, really cold during the winter. And then yeah, as I was talking about dressing, something I also find I also found weird and that I've learned is that the way they dress to work, I mean for places that I've had the opportunities to go to, it's not that serious as Nigeria. I mean, in Nigeria, you go knock suit, ah, knock better pencil skirt, button up shirt, suit. Mm. But here like everybody's just so chilled you know we have sneakers jeans and a shirt like i can wear this shirt to work everything was just very you know chill i really liked it but sometimes when i now want to wear all of my fine fine clothes to work and i'm not feeling overdressed so i can't wear it i'm like okay so in essence workplace dressing is very chilled i didn't know that before but i know that now and i like it but at the same time, I don't like it because I like to dress up to work. So something else that I'm aware of now that I wasn't aware of before, I was ignorant to, 
is the fact that there are a lot of immigrants in Canada. Like, pretty sure the proportion of immigrants are more than the actual Canadians. Like, ooh. Um, by immigrants, there are a lot of Asians, like so many, like Indians, Chinese, Japanese, Taiwanese, Hong Kong, you name it, but Asians, oh my goodness, I did not know that. Like, I, it's just where I am now, Vancouver. There's this place called Richmond, like, it's a city, like, I guess. If you go there, you are, um, the chances are, like, you are the only black person or wherever you are but like it's like a chinatown like oh my goodness like and then the chinese restaurants they if you want that loves chinese food they got you even as, as i just reached moon or everywhere i've lived in canada like there's a large asian community there like everywhere and sometimes i even get envious like ah i wish i had my kind of people like this here but that's how it is so I did not know there was a large community of Chinese, Indians, Japanese, Koreans, you name it. They are here as in, I was like, whoa, just like the US has a lot of Mexicans. So that's how it is here. Yeah. Yeah. So one more thing I remember is that um, the, the culture, like the Canadian culture here, like it's just so weird. They're always so, I think the word I'm going to use is polite i mean i might sound it might sound very cliche but they are very polite like polite polite and i say this because like for example um you're just somewhere and someone wants you to do something like maybe um just to like excuse them maybe you're like obstructing them or something excuse me ma'am um they'll, they'll ask you like do you want to move aside it's sounding like a question but it's actually a statement they're telling you to move not do you want to but they're sounding so polite and telling you do you want to like giving you an option and whenever people get off the bus they always say thank you to the bus driver even when the bus driver was about to drive off and leave you standing there inside the code they still take the driver thank you i'm like okay where i really noticed the difference between like america and, and canada was that there was a time i took a trip to the US and we took a bus and at the bus station because I needed to know when my bus was arriving or where my gate was to get on my bus I walked to the I, I walked up to the lady at the counter and I asked her she was just so rude I was like you know those black men I was like can I help you you know the sassy attitude that's what she was just giving me and she was rude by the way I, I just I, I hadn't felt that way in a long time because I had not left Canada in a long time and then when I came to Canada I went to the counter to ask the person there for something and they're just so nice and polite it's I don't know it seems like they are scared of it I don't think they are but it just seems that way but say those are these are like the things that I noticed or that I noticed and that I've learned that because I didn't know that before and I'll say this again, please pardon my ignorance. If you think I'm ignorant in any way, I apologize. So I'm going to end this video here. Thank you guys for watching my video till the end. And if you really enjoyed this video, please give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. And when you do, please click on the bell like button so that you get notified for every video that I post. And yeah, so like, comment, share. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time, bye.